Now it's time to cover the slipcase. I'm going to use the same blue book cloth that I used to cover the book, which is pretty boring, I guess. Uh, I think it's, it's old stock, so I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's Arbolave. Now these turn ends are going to get trimmed, so I'm going to leave them larger than necessary. But I do want to get uh, mark the size of the slipcase fairly accurately, because I do want those guides for gluing up. Now the turn ends into the inside of the case will be 20 millimeters, so I'll trim so that there's maybe 25, 30 millimeters on the sides and that at the head and tail I want the cloth to extend past the halfway mark. So the head and tail turn ends I'll trim to slightly more than half the thickness of the case. I'll start gluing up from the spine I'll put adhesive on both the case and the book cloth and I will stab into the book cloth to try and get the adhesive into the grain. Now the, the biggest mistake I've made in the past is having uh, bubbles underneath the book cloth where the book cloth hasn't adhered to the slip case or I've put too much adhesive on and it's puddled underneath the slip case. So it's a delicate balancing act between getting enough adhesive and not too much. So work the cloth down well and uh, break the cloth over the edges. That's a, a term that bookbinders tend to use for uh, folding the cloth over edges. Then move on to the two sides. Now some people like slightly less sharp corner edges to the slip case. If, you, if that's what you would like then before um, covering just get a sanding block and sand around the edges of the box. Uh, I like the really sharp crisp edges so I didn't do that. Next, I'll turn the cloth into the opening of the slip case. So I'll trim the cloth out parallel to the inside of the head and tail boards. I think I said 20 millimeters before, but uh, obviously I was trimming to 15 millimeters. So I've just got an old um, turn in gauge that I've trimmed to size and uh, trimming off 15 millimeters for the turn in. I'm being a bit overly generous with the adhesive here and I end up smudging a little bit on the inside lining paper so if you be a bit more careful than I have here uh, you should avoid that 
uh, squeeze out problem. To turn in the head and tail, we're going to end up cutting wet cloth. You need a really sharp blade for that, so I'm going to refresh the tip of my snap-off blade. I'm just going to cut out from the corners. This doesn't have to be super accurate because we're going to trim it further, but just make sure it comes out right from the corner of the slip case. I'm going to trim the cloth uh, directly down the center of the head and tail. So I want to be able to measure that. So I'm going to set a pair of dividers to half the width of the slip case. So go ahead and um, glue these down and they're going to overlap and that's exactly what you want. Now without rushing or panicking you want to move through these steps fairly quickly because you don't want the glue to set up too well. So start by turning in the flap from the, from the spine and then the flaps from the sides. Trim the front along the curved edge and then prick a line down the center of the, the slip case. And also mark in the same distance from the spine. Now we're going to cut down that line to that distance away from the spine. Then cut out to the corners. Now it does help to put a bit of downward pressure on the ruler to stop the cloth slipping while it's wet. Now it's cut through to the board, uh, peel it back and get rid of the overlapping cloth. Because you are being careful not to cut too deeply into the board, there will be a few threads here and there that won't be cut completely through. Be careful not to yank those and stretch the cloth. Just uh, carefully cut them with the knife. And once all the excess material, the overlapping cloth is removed, then re-glue and then push everything down. Now you're going to have some glue on the outside of the cloth. And that's fine because we're going to put another cloth, piece of cloth, over the top of this, which is going to hide that glue. But the main thing you don't want is any little lumps and bumps that are going to show through. So you want everything to join up really nicely uh, at the cut lines.
So once you finish this step, it's a really good time to take a break and get a coffee or a tea uh, because the next step is a bit fiddly and you want to be nice and fresh for it. Now if you do a slip case that's square at the front instead of curved, then you'd be done in about five minutes. Uh, that uh, curve, which looks so nice, adds a lot of fiddly work to the job. So start by cutting a strip of cloth that's a couple inches wider than the slip case. Trace the end of the slip case. Make sure you mark the uh, the front of the slip case, right at the edge of the curve. Now we have to um, make an allowance for the turn in at the entrance. So you want that about uh, 15 millimeters wide and then cut that out. Now for the part that's going to go on the top of the case, cut that a millimeter inside the line. Ideally the cloth comes down just at the start of the curve of the edge of the box and if you can get it at that location it almost disappears. You can hardly see it. Make sure you're happy with the fit before gluing it. I found the really sharp corners on this top piece of cloth are hard to hide. So I just take a tiny bit off the corners and that helps that stick down and blend into the corner of the slip case. Now you want this to stick down well and quite quick, so PVA would be a good option. But also if you don't get it down exactly right, then you need to be able to move it around. So I usually use mix for this. And to help this adhere really well, I'll put adhesive on the end of the case as well. Now if you use just the right amount of force with your bone folder, you can make the edge of the cloth almost disappear. So the Goldilocks force, I guess. Rubbing down too hard and you risk polishing the cloth. You could use a piece of rubbing down paper to try and minimize that. Uh, just take it easy and it normally works out fine. Now go ahead and do the other end. Now there's other ways to cover a slip case. Another popular method is to cut a thin long strip of cloth and run that all the way around over the head, then the spine, then the tail, and then to put panels on the side. 
that's a good approach if you want a two colored slip case. So you can run one color around the edges and then have a different color on the sides. Now the turn in at the head and tail can be very fiddly. So I start by drawing a line the thickness of the board away from that front curve. I don't want to cut inside that because I want, don't want the cloth that's going over the, uh, over the edge of the board to be cut. I want that to be continuous. Now the tricky part is to go along and cut little strips that turn in and keep adjusting them so that they don't overlap. Now it'll be a little bit messy, it won't be as neat as you hope, uh, but it's going to get covered up again, just like the head and the tail on the outside. But you do want to try and get it as neat as possible, and it is fiddly. So I just take an iterative approach to it. I, I try it, I see if it fits, if it doesn't fit I'll trim a little bit more off and get it to fit. Now when I do the other end I remember that it's easier to come in from each side and then meet in the middle, but uh, for this end I'm just going to go all the way around from one side to the other, but you'll see uh, I do it much quicker uh, on the second end coming in from each side. Now I think doing these little turn-ins at the head and tail took as long as the rest of the project in total. So I've um, sped it up a fair bit, but I did want to leave enough in just so that you understood that it is a time-consuming and fiddly little process. And if your book has a fairly square spine, it's probably just easier to do a square entrance to the slipcase. Now the really satisfying step of hiding the mess with a little piece of cloth that goes in the same distance as the turn-ins on the side. A little trick my teacher told me was if you're worried about tiny little gaps showing 
the um, lining underneath, then use a felt pen to colour in uh, underneath the cloth. I'm going to trim this edge just inside the line. If it's a fraction of a millimetre back from the edge of the board, it will be much less visible. Now do the same thing on the other end and as I mentioned before I'll come in from each side and meet in the middle which was a lot faster. Uh, maybe it wasn't quite as neat but then it's covered up anyway and I'd rather be fast on this little frustrating job. So that's the slip case done. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. I'm going to move on to some projects involving leather over the next month or two. So if you'd like to be notified when those videos are ready, please hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching.